visit us on the web at nilfiskyou.com. Nilfisk University is the cleaning equipment industry's most comprehensive web-based training and interactive learning resource. Your degree in success is just a click away at Nilfisk University. Welcome to Nilfisk University, where excellence is attained through active learning. Welcome to Use and Care Training for the Clark EX40, 16ST, and 18LX self-contained extractors. The EX40, 16ST, and 18LX both provide deep cleaning carpet extraction with superior water recovery for faster dry times, all in an intuitive and easy-to-use design. This training will provide an introduction to the EX40, 16ST, and 18LX components and systems, the daily steps to safely use the machine, and the routine maintenance and care steps for the machine. The two EX40 extractors are very similar in design and operation, with the main difference being that the 18LX has a larger cleaning path and a greater solution capacity than the 16ST, and also includes a flip design handle that allows an operator to push the machine as well as pull the machine. Unless specifically noted, all statements made during this training will apply to both machine platforms. There are some slight design appearance differences between the designs, so if the image provided in this training does not look exactly like your machine, it is because the other machine is being featured in the image. However, functionality will be the same unless noted. This course is not intended to be a substitute for the operator's manual that ships with the machine. It is important that you read, understand, and follow all safety and operating instructions in the manual. Doing so will ensure years of safe operation and optimum performance from your machine. Course Outcomes After successfully completing this training module, you will be able to identify and explain machine components and their function. Machine setup and operation, including how the extractor works, machine preparation, operating the machine, dumping and refilling the machine tanks, cleaning with accessory tools, machine cleanup process, and routine maintenance steps, including servicing the spray nozzles, solution filter cleaning, and carbon motor brush inspection. This training will begin with an introduction of the components and features of the machine. We will then cover the daily use and care steps which you will follow for a shift of cleaning, including machine setup, using the machine for carpet extraction, and cleaning up the machine after a shift of cleaning. This will be followed by a review of routine maintenance steps. This course concludes with a learner quiz to ensure knowledge has been properly transferred. Feel free to take notes while viewing this presentation. You can use the toolbar located at the bottom of the presentation to pause and restart the playback. You can navigate to any slide within the presentation by clicking its slide title in the outline pane to the right. Now let's get started. Overview of components and their functions on the machines. This will be the same for both the 16ST and 18LX models, unless otherwise noted. Starting with the main body, the machine design consists of a rotomolded recovery tank that captures and holds recovered solution and soil. This tank is removable from the machine for easy dumping and cleanup and includes a yellow carrying handle that resides beneath the tank lid. The recovery tank dumping hose shown here in its storage location allows easy dumping into toilets, slop sinks, or other proper waste disposal location. On top of the recovery tank is the translucent dome lid that allows you to see recovered solution entering the tank. On the underside of the vacuum lid is an automatic float ball vacuum shutoff that protects the vacuum motor from water ingestion if the recovery tank is full. The solution tank is located here and holds the clean solution for the extraction process. For the 16ST, this tank is 9 gallon 34 liters in capacity. For the 18LX, it is 12 gallons or 45 liters in capacity. The vacuum shoe with efficient water recovery design can be removed by releasing the vacuum shoe release lever. Brush deck contains the cylindrical brush which is accessible by tipping the machine back. The brush deck has a storage position that can be engaged by the brush deck storage lift lever. Non-marking large rear tires allow for easy maneuverability during cleaning and transport. The ergonomic operator handle includes operator interface that will be covered just ahead. The operator handle height is adjustable by releasing the handle angle release lever. The 18LX has a single yellow lever on the left side of the machine. 
the vacuum mode selector knob allows you to put vacuum power to either the vacuum shoe or the hand tool accessory. The power cord is a 50 foot 15 meter long safety yellow cord. It is attached to the machine via a short pigtail cord to allow you to disconnect the power cord from the machine. At the top end of the handle is the operator control interface panel that consists of a power switch for activating the machine, the vacuum shoe accessory switch. This switch should only be in the accessory position when using the hand tool or wand. A circuit breaker to protect the machine electronics. This area is the ground continuity checkpoint used by a technician to check for proper ground and it is not used during normal cleaning operations. The solution spray activation switch located on the underside of the handle turns solution spray on during extraction. Looking at the back of the machine we find a clear tube that indicates the solution tank level. This also serves as the solution tank drain. If connecting an optional hand tool or wand to the machine, the accessory pressure connection is located here and the vacuum connection is located here. This is the bracket for storing the power cord. It is also used for storing the optional hand tool. With the recovery tank removed and the domed lid tipped up, you will find the solution tank filling port. This includes a fill hose holder to hold the hose in place while filling the solution tank. Solution tank filter access. Twist the knob a quarter turn counterclockwise to remove the filter system for inspection and cleaning. The vacuum motor is located beneath this panel here. There are up to three vacuum hoses that will be located in this position. The vacuum hose which carries the recovery water up from the vacuum shoe is this first hose. The accessory hose used to supply vacuum to the optional accessory will not be present if a hand tool accessory has not been added. And the vacuum motor hose which connects to the vacuum motor. Never dump water down this third hose during cleanup as it leads directly into the vacuum motor which is intended to be run dry. In normal operation, these hoses should all be firmly connected to the recovery tank dome lid. To disconnect a hose from the lid, turn the hose one quarter turn where it connects to the dome lid and pull out. Looking at the base of the machine, we find the cleaning brush which provides the agitation to liberate the dirt and debris from the carpet fibers and the single spray jet technology spray nozzle used to apply water to the carpet. It's helpful to have a basic understanding of how a self-contained carpet extractor works. To clean carpets, this machine executes three functions as you pull the machine along the carpet in the direction indicated. It first sprays solution from the solution tank onto the carpet through the spray nozzle. Then, the brush agitates the wet carpet fibers to loosen the dirt and soil bonded to the carpet fibers. Lastly, a powerful vacuum recovers the dirty solution via the vacuum shoe, carrying away the soil and most of the solution water. The recovered water is gathered in the recovery tank for later disposal. Starting a cleaning shift. To assure successful trouble-free extraction, there are a few preparation and inspection steps that must be completed prior to a cleaning shift with the machine. If the machine's storage steps were properly followed after the previous use, then you should find the machine in this condition. The recovery tank cleaned out with the domed lid open allowing it to air dry. Brush cleaned of hair and debris and put back in its position in the machine scrub deck. The brush deck left in the raised and locked position to prevent the bristles from taking a set against the floor. The vacuum shoe clean with no debris blocking the opening that glides against the carpet. Let's go through these steps in a bit more detail. Recovery tank inspection. Tip up the domed lid of the recovery tank and make sure that the recovery tank is empty and clean. Check the ball float cage connected to the lid and make sure it is clean and that the ball moves freely within the cage. A clip on each side of the cage holds it in place on the cover and can be opened to remove the ball float cage for more thorough cleaning. Verify hoses are connected to the tank lid. If the hand tool option has been ordered, a third internal hose will be present here. Verify the recovery tank drain hose is properly capped with the hose in its storage location. If the cap is not fully in place, the vacuum shoe will not have enough vacuum power to properly recover the solution while extracting. Brush inspection and installation. Tip the machine back exposing the brush. Verify that the brush is clean of sand, hair, and other debris and is not overly worn out. To function properly, the brush must be clean without debris that can prevent the bristles from moving freely. Clean the brush now if necessary or replace if overly worn or damaged. Brush removal. 
To remove the brush, grasp the brush firmly and pull away from the machine on the side of the machine indicated. This is the non-drive side of the brush. Brush installation. To reinstall the brush, first engage the drive side of the brush with the drive lug as shown. Press firmly in on the other side of the brush until it locks in place. A firm strike with the heel of your hand helps lock the brush in place. While at the base of the machine, also inspect the vacuum shoe by looking through the vacuum opening and assure there is no debris obstructing airflow and reducing recovery performance. If the shoe is not clean, remove the shoe and clean it now. To remove the shoe, release the yellow latch and then disconnect the vacuum shoe hose. Reassemble in reverse order after cleaning. The final inspection step is to give the machine a quick walk around and look for anything that looks worn, loose, damaged, or leaking, or out of place. Also give the power cord a good review to assure it is not damaged in any way. Address issues found with the machine before using it for cleaning. Before beginning the extraction process, the entire carpeted area to be extracted should be thoroughly vacuumed with a professional vacuum to remove any loose soils. Failure to do so may degrade the cleaning results of the extraction process. Extractors are designed to remove the soils bonded to the carpet fibers, not the loose debris like sand, dust, and other particles that are better and more easily addressed with a vacuum. Chemical pretreating and general cleaning chemical usage. There is no hard and fast rules for chemical use, but clearly chemicals will help break down the soils and oils to get carpets cleaner. A common practice is to use a spray-on chemical to pre-treat stains and more heavily soiled areas like traffic lanes in the carpet. If you plan to use a spray-on pretreatment chemical, do that now before setting up the machine to let it dwell a while and break down the soils. Chemicals can be used inside the portable extractor mixed into the water in the solution tank and sprayed down to the carpet during extraction as well. Be sure to use chemicals specifically designed for what you are doing and what is compatible with your equipment. As an example, if a low foam extraction chemical is not used, your recovery tank will quickly fill with foam during extraction. Contact your professional equipment dealership to find out what process and chemicals are best for your application to get the results and cleaning cost you are after. Filling the machine the fill port is located under the recovery tank. Lift out the recovery tank to expose the solution tank fill port. Use this port to fill the machine with clean water using either a hose or bucket. If filling with a hose, a convenient hose lock system is built into the tank to hold the hose in place while filling. Hot water cleans more effectively and is thus recommended, but the water temperature should not exceed 130 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 54 degrees Celsius. If you choose to add chemical to the machine for cleaning, measure out the appropriate chemical now and add to the solution tank to mix in with the water. Finally, lift the recovery tank back in place on top of the solution tank and close the dome lid to get a good seal with the recovery tank. We are now ready to transport the machine to the area to be cleaned. Adjust the operator handle to a comfortable operating height. For the 16ST model, this is done by disengaging the handle level release levers and then locking them down at the desired handle height. For the 18LX, there is a single yellow handle on the left side of the machine that when disengaged allows the handle height to be adjusted. The 18LX model also has the flipped handle feature that when extracting allows the handle to be flipped over the top of the machine to the other side allowing the operator to walk behind the machine rather than in front of the machine like the 16ST and other typical extractors. Tip the machine back onto the large rear wheels and roll the machine to the location where it is to be used. If you are required to go up or down stairs, make sure to fill the machine with water after going up or down the stairs. Move up or down the stairs one step at a time, being careful to lift with your legs. If available, use an elevator to make this task much easier. Before plugging in the machine, first look at the main power switch on the control panel and assure it is in the off position so it does not start unexpectedly when plugging in the cord. If not already connected, connect the 50 foot 15 meter extension cord to the power pigtail on the machine and activate the locking mechanism to maintain a tight connection. Plug the other end of the power cord into a grounded outlet. If you notice any damage to the power cord, do not use the machine until repaired or replaced. 
For efficient cleaning, it is best to have a cleaning plan. Make your plan before powering up the machine. Plan your cleaning to allow long straight lines which are most efficient. Work away from the outlet that the machine is plugged into to help manage the cord. Clean at a consistent pace. A good cleaning speed is around one foot per second. Overlap each path around two inches to assure consistent cleaning and avoid missed areas causing striping. The machine cleans closer to the edge along the right side of the machine, so use this side along walls and other obstructions. Prior to making a turn, release the solution spray switch to prevent leaving water on turns. To begin extraction, press the vacuum accessory selection switch on the control panel to the extraction vacuum shoe position. When this switch is in the accessory position, the brush motor will not be turned on when the machine is active. Turn the vacuum selector knob on the recovery tank lid to the vacuum shoe position. Turn it all the way so that the arrows align to assure proper routing of vacuum power to the vacuum shoe. Lower cleaning deck from the storage position to the carpet by pressing down on the yellow brush storage lever, putting the brush deck into the unlocked position. The brush deck is a floating deck system, so cleaning pressure does not need to be adjusted. Turn the main power switch to the on position. This will turn on the vacuum, the brush motor, and arm the solution pump. Press and hold the solution spray switch on the operator handle to begin spray of solution. Pull back on the handle to move the machine along the carpet and you are extracting. As you first get started, it is a good idea to make sure the machine is spraying properly and evenly. To create a test spray strip to verify proper spraying, follow these steps. Tip back the machine, getting the vacuum shoe slightly off of the carpet. Activate the spray system by pressing the solution switch on the handle and pull back the machine for a short distance on its rear wheels. If working properly, there should be an even path of wet carpet that spans the width of the cleaning brush. If the spray tip is not spraying an even spray pattern, clean the spray tip before continuing or inconsistent cleaning could result. The steps for maintaining these spray tips are covered in the routine maintenance portion of the training. Once you have even spray coverage verified, recover the test strip and then let the extraction process begin. While extracting, recovered solution should be visible entering the recovery tank. There is a clear section in the tank lid to help you see the recovered solution. If you do not see solution being recovered by looking through the domed lid, then you have a vacuum leak somewhere. Check the vacuum hoses are properly connected to the vacuum recovery tank lid and assure the solution tank drain hose is properly capped. If significant foam develops in the recovery tank, add a defoaming agent to the recovery tank. If foam reaches the float ball height, turn off vacuum and empty the recovery tank to prevent foam from getting to the vacuum motor. Continue cleaning until the area to be cleaned has been completed or until either the solution tank becomes empty or the recovery tank becomes full. At that point, it is time to turn off the machine, dump the recovery tank, and refill the solution tank or clean up the machine if finished cleaning for the day. Dumping and recovering the recovery and solution tanks. This machine has a ball float valve that protects the vacuum motor from ingesting water when the recovery tank becomes full. Once the ball float activates, the vacuum motor pitch will change to a higher pitch sound and water will no longer be pulled up from the carpet. Usually, you will run out of solution before the float ball engages. When the solution tank is empty or the recovery tank full, turn off the cleaning system and unplug the machine from the wall or the cord pigtail. Then transport the machine to a suitable location to empty it. Remove the recovery tank drain hose from its storage clip and remove the cap. Bend the hose over to prevent flow and then release the hose at the drain opening. If easier for your application, the recovery tank can be carried separate from the machine to the disposal location. Once the recovery tank is emptied, reinstall the drain hose cap and put the hose back in its storage location. If more extraction is to be completed, fill the solution tank again and go clean. Drying the carpet. Even though the extractor vacuum recovery performance is best in class, the carpet will still be damp after extraction. The carpet should be allowed to fully dry prior to opening back up for regular use. The use of air movers to circulate air above the carpets will greatly reduce dry time and reduce the chance of mold growth in the carpet. Using Accessories This extractor has available value-added accessories to increase cleaning results and flexibility. 
The hand tool is for cleaning carpet spots or for stairs, furniture, and upholstery cleaning. There is also a wand for cleaning tight areas where the machine won't fit and allows the operator to clean in a standing position. The wand option works similar to the hand tool, however, there is not onboard storage built in. There is also a hard floor cleaning kit. If equipped with the hand tool, follow these steps to use the accessory. If not already completed, connect the accessory tool vacuum hose to the hose connection location shown and connect the solution supply to the solution quick disconnect. In addition, there is an internal vacuum hose that must be installed to allow the kit to work with your unit. Turn both the vacuum shoe accessory switch on the control panel and the vacuum mode selection knob on the lid to the accessory position. Be sure to turn the knob all the way and line up the arrows as shown. Turn on the main power switch. To clean, hold the hand tool parallel to the surface being cleaned. Pull the spray trigger on the tool and drag the tool in the direction of the vacuum hose. The hand tool system has a convenient storage location on the back of the machine for when it is not in use. If using the wand tool, it should be disconnected when not in use. When finished using the accessory tool, remember to turn the selection switch and knob back to the normal cleaning mode. The optional hard floor kit allows you to increase cleaning flexibility by converting the machine from a carpet extractor to a hard floor auto scrubber. To install the hard floor kit, remove and replace the brush with a more aggressive brush for hard floor cleaning, although the carpet brush can be used as well. Next, replace the vacuum shoe with the squeegee tool. To remove the vacuum shoe, push and hold the yellow vacuum shoe release lever and slide the shoe off of the mounting location and disconnect the vacuum hose. Next, connect the vacuum hose to the squeegee tool as shown, then push the yellow release lever on the squeegee tool and install the squeegee tool on the machine as shown. Activate the machine the same as you would for extraction. The squeegee will pick up water in both forward and reverse directions. Storing the machine. After each use of the extractor, turn off the machine with the power switch and then unplug it and coil the cord and store it in its storage location. Place the brush deck in the raised locked storage position by lifting up on the brush deck storage lift lever. This will prevent the brush bristles from taking a set and maintain the performance of the brush. Empty and fully rinse the recovery tank. Remove and rinse the domed lid and included float ball and cage vacuum shutoff system. Assure the ball moves freely within the cage. The lid can be removed by disconnecting the hoses with a quarter turn. Rinse the vacuum hoses that were exposed to recovered solution and soil. Rinse them and reinstall them into the tank lid. Do not rinse the indicated hose here that leads directly to the vacuum motor. Leave the lid open to air dry to prevent odors. If the solution tank is not empty, you can empty it by disconnecting the solution level hose and draining the tank. Remove and clean the brush of any hair and debris and then reinstall the brush to store. Remove the vacuum shoe by pressing the vacuum shoe release lever. Rinse the shoe and remove any debris in the shoe and then reinstall the shoe. Wipe down the machine to keep it looking its best. Store the machine in a dry place, remembering to leave the recovery tank lid open to allow the tank to air dry. Never store the extractor in a location where it might freeze. Freezing can cause the machine pumps to be damaged. Routine Maintenance To maintain proper machine performance, the following routine maintenance items should be completed on a weekly basis. Inspect and clean the solution spray nozzle. If a scale buildup is present, use a wrench to remove the spray tip and soak overnight in vinegar or similar descaling chemical to clean the tip. Remove, inspect, and clean the solution filter. Do this by turning the filter assembly one quarter turn clockwise. Leave the hose attached. Lift the filter system straight up to remove. Once out, clean and inspect the filter. Reinstall the filter system, being sure to seat the solution hose back in its proper location. On a yearly basis, or every 300 hours, Flush the full solution system with vinegar to dissolve scale buildup. To do this, add vinegar to an empty solution tank and then run solution through the solution system and nozzles for a few minutes. Finally, contact a qualified service technician to check for wear on the carbon brush motors. The brushes are rated for 500 hours of continuous use. 
This concludes the instructional portion of this training module. By successfully completing this training module, you should now be able to identify and explain machine components and their function. Machine setup and operation, including how the extractor works, machine preparation, operating the machine, dumping and refilling the machine tanks, cleaning with accessory tools, machine cleanup process, and routine maintenance steps including servicing the spray nozzles, solution filter cleaning, and carbon motor brush inspection. Visit us on the web at nilfiskyou.com. Nilfisk University is the cleaning equipment industry's most comprehensive web-based training and interactive learning resource. Your degree in success is just a click away at Nilfisk University.